Hey, hey, retro gamers, how you doing? Uh, a little over two years ago, I did a, a tour of my retro gaming room, and the other day, uh, retro game on viewer Batty Boy Holden, all the way from beautiful New Zealand, uh, sent me a message asking me if I could do an updated tour. I said, sure, why not? Mine as well. Um, things haven't really changed that drastically in two years, except for the fact that my game collection is probably about three times as big, probably. Uh, the, the consoles I have on display running are, are pretty much the same, uh, but it's really the game collection that has really just exploded. But anyway, let's get to it. I'll, I'll start with the game collection, because as I said, the consoles haven't really changed that much, but I want to try and keep this video shorter than the other one, which was about 15 minutes long. And I'll just quickly go through all the consoles at the end, just in case anyone hasn't seen the 2013 video, because it does just go for ages. So anyway, let's get to it. Recording on my phone here, because I am mad. But I'm also lazy. And I don't actually own a camcorder. Everything I do on my for my channel is actually using a DSLR, which has no autofocus. But anyway, here is the game collection in all its glory. Um, before, when you saw it, probably in the 2013 video, you would have noticed that I was really only using uh, that shelf. Actually, no, I was really just that shelf, that shelf, and that shelf. Everything else is full of books. There's still books over there. I think they're all my mum's books. But I've slowly just taken over the whole bookshelf. So I guess we'll start over here. Let me just uh, get myself a nice seat because I am feeling lazy, really lazy today. So the PS1 collection is probably one of my biggest collections out of everything. It all comes down to myself being a really huge fan of the PlayStation and, of course, growing up with one. Uh, plus, all the games are really cheap. A lot of these I've picked up for a couple of dollars each at op shops. And, yeah, basically the collection you probably saw in the 2013 video was probably from about here to here. Not those games, obviously. This is probably one of the few collections out of all the different consoles that are actually alphabetized for whatever reason. I don't know, but... Basically, I had a very sh small selection of just a few games I had from my childhood. I'm um, at the end there. I've also got some demo discs sort of just crammed in the end there, as well as some GameCube games. That is, that is my entire GameCube collection. Set to expand, of course, uh, but my girlfriend actually gave me those. So, thank you, Annika. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't actually own a, a GameCube either, but I do have a Wii, but I guess I'll get to that in a second. Uh, we'll keep to the bottom shelf here and just sort of hurry this along where my... Xbox collection is across there. Uh, there's also uh, a Splinter Cell game here. The reason that doesn't have a case is because someone actually gave me uh, a disk drive just like a, as a spare part. The disk drive doesn't work, but that was sitting in the disk drive, so, you know, that's nice. But in the last video, basically, I, I think I only had like one or two Xbox games. Um, over here, we also have some of my PC games. I'll show you the rest of my PC games in a second. Um, but I've been really buying a lot of these recently because I've actually now have a dedicated computer for playing retro games. I'll actually be talking about that in a separate video, though. It's not in this setup. It's actually in my bedroom along with my modern computer. I've got them all connected into the same desk and monitor and keyboard and all that. But that will be for a separate video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I also got some uh, dual case games there as well. I do like to collect the big box ones though, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, since my last video, my Atari ST collection has doubled. Uh, before I just had, uh, what was that, T-Bird. Uh, I bought that really cheap as a test game, but since then I have bought Lotus Turbo Challenge. Um, I love Atari ST. Uh, the reason I don't have many games is because I don't come across them in the wild. I've never come across floppy disk games out in the wild, even in op shops. So if I want a Atari ST game, I have to actively go online and buy them. And they're not really that cheap. They're, they're not too expensive, but yeah, I should probably buy more and then probably do a video on the Atari ST because it's the one computer I do own. There it is. And yeah, I think it's a super cool computer. Anyway, moving along, moving along. In here, we've got a, a mix of a few different things. Uh, on the left-hand side here, we have all my Atari 2600 games. Oops. Um... Yeah, I don't really play my Atari ST that much. Sorry, my Atari 2600 that much. I probably should more. It's kind of just a pain in the ass because it's not plugged in via composite. I have to tune it into my TV. But yeah, if you guys want to see more Atari 2600 reviews and give me a shout. In the past, I haven't really gotten that many views, so I don't know how much of a of a uh, of a need you want for them. But yeah, whatever. Over here we have. All my Super Nintendo game, forward slash Super Famicom games. I've been buying a lot of games for the Super Famicom because 
Well, frankly, it's it's just a bit. It's just quite a bit cheaper. I don't know why. And generally, they're in English as well. So like this box game of F Zero here, oh, that was like ten bucks. So just buy a cart only of that uh, in in a PAL version. Version, sorry, PAL version. It's quite a bit more. I can't give you an exact price, but it was just a lot more affordable just to buy it on the Super Famicom. I've also got Lemmings there. That came in uh, my retro game box, uh, which they sent to me a little while ago for a review. Um, over here we have my Mega Drive collection, which probably has gotten quite a bit bigger since uh, since the other video. I just gotten the Mega Drive when I made the other video, so I think I only had I think I had uh, was it like a Flippy or whatever it's called. Oh, I'm not going to pull it out. Only, I think I've only played it the one time. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably review it sooner or later and play it more. Anyway, whatever. We do have some box games over here as well that I've just picked up, usually in op shops. Um, and then we have the Famicom games at the top there, just kind of chucked in. I don't play much Famicom, because again, obviously I never find that out in the wild. I have to go and buy those online. Although I did buy a, a couple of them off Gumtree once, so that was cool. Now moving along to my PS2 collection, which is probably the biggest collection out of all the game gaming systems I have. In the 2013 video, I mentioned that I expected this collection to explode because it's so goddamn cheap. And look, I was right. I've, I don't know how many I have. There must be at least 50 there, at least. A, a lot of these have been bought for $2, $3, sometimes even a dollar. Same for the Xbox games. They're quite cheap as well. I literally bought the original Halo for a dollar. That, that's just awesome. Might as well just keep going up. And we have my big box game collection, which I've been buying for about the last year or so. Don't come across them that often, but I do always buy them when I do come across them, because it's just like collecting vinyls, you know. They are really awesome to own and put on a shelf. I can thank uh, Lazy Game Reviews for wanting to basically collect them, because he has literally, like, from there to there of shelving of just big box PC games, and I find it amazing. Anyway, moving along, uh, oh, there's that 8-bit evolution sent me that and I, re I reviewed that a little while ago just like a little I don't know if I what it calls that little pixel art sort of thing, but whatever uh, We'll go back down then we'll go back up again nearly finished with the games uh, here We have all my Dreamcast games, which have really stayed more or less the same I've added a few more titles, but I have added quite a few Japanese Dreamcast titles because again, they're quite cheap I don't own a, a Japanese Dreamcast, but I do have a disc that basically soft mods it so that's pretty cool. Um, up there we also have my N64 games. Could probably have more of those, can never have enough N64 games, but it is a nice little collection at the moment. And I do own Banjo-Kazooie Box, because I found that for $20. How could I not buy that? Even though at the time I already owned it, I've actually since sold the cartridge only copy I have of it, but now I have it boxed, so yeah, that's awesome. Uh, over here we've just got some handheld games. We've got my box DS games and my box Game Boy Color games. I think all the box, I think they're all from my childhood. Yeah, I'm going to say they're all from my childhood. The Game Boy Color games, definitely, except for the Jet Set Radio and Game Boy Advance. I found that boxed really cheap. It's kind of crap, but how can you not buy it? It's cheap. Um, moving up here, I've got two little displays for handheld gaming. Uh, at the bottom here is basically all the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and I think there's F-Zero on Game Boy Advance there as well. I've got my childhood limited edition Pokemon Pikachu and Pik uh, Pichu, yeah, I think that's Pichu, <laughs> Game Boy Color, as well as my SP, and also, of course, my Super Game Boy, so then I can play the original Game Boy games through my Super Nintendo and then record them. Um, going up here, we have my Game Gear collection. Well, oh, focus, damn you. There it is, isn't that nicer? Um, at the time, the 2013 video, I, I didn't have a working Game Gear, but now I do. And since I bought it, I've hardly played it. So that, that makes me feel a bit silly, but I do have quite a few games. They're all full of games as well. So yeah, cool console, screen is balls, but you know, it's, yeah, it's cool. So anyway, back into the case you go. So anyway, let's move along to the consoles. Wow, this video is already nearly run for 10 minutes. I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. Now, let me just sit back a little bit. So this really hasn't changed at all that much. I'm pretty sure every single console that is on display today was on display in the other video, except for the Xbox down there. This Xbox is an Evo X modded Xbox. So the disk drive doesn't actually work. Sorry, let me just focus this. Sorry, Samsung phone, you understand. There we go, finally. Uh, so the disk drive doesn't work. Uh, 
not because it's modded, but just because it's broken, but I do use this for emulation. But I do have about four other Xboxes. Somehow I've just accumulated them. Two of them are in complete working order. Uh, one of them, the disk drive doesn't work again, like the modded one. And there is another one, uh, there's actually a, a Halo special edition, one, special edition one in this box here, which doesn't work. Actually, it doesn't have a hard drive or a disk drive, but I have it as a, as a mod chip as well, actually. I also have a carry bag. That's empty at the moment, but I thought that was pretty cool. And there you'll see my Atari ST, as well as my Japanese PlayStation. Oh yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. I do have some Japanese... PS1 games. Again, because usually they're much cheaper for certain titles than their PAL or NTSC counterparts. Uh, up here we also have my clusterfuck of controllers. I really need to find a better way to store my controllers. Once upon a time, every single bag was full of just one console's controller. So there's a lot of different shit in this bag, for example, but maybe at one time it just had N64 controllers. So I could just pull the bag out for the right console and take the controller out. But I really need to reorganize this because I just get really lazy. I sort of just chuck the controllers back in there without really thinking. Um, and plus I need a bigger box because obviously the Miller's genuine draft is not cutting it at the moment. So we'll go back over to the consoles. I'll give a, just a very quick explanation as to how I got these, because as I said, the video is starting to run quite long. Um, the Sony PlayStation here, I bought that from a thrift store, not, well, probably, well, probably actually about four years ago now. That was about 20 or $30, usually the going price. The N64 over here I got from a good Sammy's op shop. That was about 20 bucks or 30 bucks. So I was quite happy with that since these seem to go for quite a bit in Australia. And that is the only N64 to this date that I've ever seen in an op shop. Also another thing, uh, this is actually a thing I did this morning. I, I've all paired them up in the same generation. So obviously it was always a PlayStation against the N64, the Dreamcast against the PS2, and then I got the Mega Drive against the Super Nintendo there. There is no really any reason for that except just for my own amusement i guess <laughs> anyway i'll uh, move along we've got my dreamcast here which actually started my modern collection i bought that online for a price i don't want to disclose because it was way too expensive but because i was just entering the hobby at the time i had no idea but uh very much like the n64 i've never seen one of those in the wild except for dedicated retro gaming stores so i'm happy i have it uh there's my ps2 there that one is from my childhood well i, know, I think i must have been about 14 or so when i got it uh, over here we have my Super Nintendo, which was given to me for free by my friend as a birthday present, so thank you, Callum. Uh, moving along here, we have my Mega Drive. I paid $20 for that on Gumtree, which uh, if I haven't explained, I think I mentioned Gumtree before. Gumtree is basically a Craigslist. Uh, so that was an uh, awesome bargain because they go for ridiculous prices in Australia as well. Uh, here we have my sound system. Uh, there's the speakers. You can't not justify a good sound system especially when you're using a crappy old tv like this uh, moving along down here we have the atari 2600 uh, god knows how much i paid for this originally no idea it was under 20 bucks um, over here we have a famicom original famicom this was given to me as well someone found it on the side of the road as well as a few other things which i'll point out in a second so that was cool because it works so that was free uh in the same box that I was found was also my Super Famicom, uh, which is, of course, the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo. And that's why that's, those games up there, that's where they come from. So I think I've mentioned all of those now. Oh, there's also a Wii up there as well, which I use for my very small GameCube collection over there. And uh, that was given to me as a Christmas... Uh, it was actually a joint Christmas present for me and my sister a number of years ago. Uh, my sister still uses it for Zelda games. And I don't know. I don't play Zelda. I mean, it's cool and all, but just, you know, not my thing. Don't want to start a fight in the comments or anything. Um, over here, I'll show you my my switching system. Um, I actually uh, put down the money and bought a proper labeler just so it all looked really nice. So everything is plugged in and ready to be played at a moment's notice. That's probably my favorite thing about this setup. So everything is all plugged in as well. And look, oh, that's, that's just horrible. I really need to sort that out. But everything is all connected in via composite, which isn't great either. But considering the TV I have, it's the best I'm going to get. I am in the market for a Sony Trinitron, but I'm yet to come across one at a decent price. But I am on the lookout. Um, over here is something that solely needs to be replaced. Uh, this was actually given to me for free as well. But this is a step-down transformer. 
so I can play the Japanese consoles uh, through an Australian PowerPoint because our voltage is a lot more than theirs. So if I just plugged, say, that Super Famicom straight into the PowerPoint without any protection, it'd probably blow it straight through the blow it straight through the window. Um, but these I can get these quite cheaply now at JCar. Um, you know, I think they were about fifty bucks, I think, for what I needed, and I'll probably buy a power board as well. Man, the focusing on this really sucks. Uh, but I mean this works fine, but it's about 50 years old, so I don't really want to be using something that changes voltage that's so old. And yeah, um, probably not really much else I can talk about. Oh man, I've already hit 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, this table here is fantastic. I found it for free on the side of the road. <laughs> I always have my, uh, my laptop set up on it when I'm recording games. Um, and lastly over here is my beanbag, which I cannot recommend enough. Having a beanbag is simply amazing. And they're quite cheap as well. Oh, one more thing. I do have a few more game uh, gaming things in here. Just a little bit of uh, odd ends. There's another Famicom there which came in the same box. Uh, there's an Atari 2600 there that is non-working. I think there's a few memory cards crammed in there at the back as well. A PS1 that works as another PS1. Uh, there's Oh, there's also a PS2 on there as well. I don't know if you can see it. Hello. Uh, that doesn't work. It turns on, but the disk drive's fucked. Uh, we've got some instruction manuals there, and then a pirating device for the Super Famicom, which also came in the box, which I've never used because all the menus are in Japanese. But yes, that's it. Hopefully it focuses on me because I can't see if it's a focus or not. But yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll probably do another tour in another couple of years. But yeah, not really much else to say. Sorry the video went for so long, and I'll catch you in the next review.